Welcome everybody. We want to talk about custody with larger banks and therefore I'm quite happy to also have Deutsche Bank here together with Taurus. Uh, we so far didn't have much contact with Deutsche Bank. Um, you have been um, working more in the background, I guess so. Others uh, in the market have been shouting out earlier. Uh, that's how I would interpret the strategy, right? But it's very nice to now see also Deutsche Bank uh, publicly joining the digital assets uh, topic. Um, and we also have uh, Taurus here from the custody side. And we would like to discuss the intersection between Taurus as a custody provider, Deutsche Bank as an regulated financial intermediary, how does this play out, where are the barriers, where are we with regard to blockchain technology. And we had a very interesting preparation call, um, for example, we would like also to discuss why did blockchain so far not succeed easily, why, why has it been so difficult to reach for adoption, that's the topics we would like uh, to discuss. And uh, maybe to get started, please, you two, present yourself briefly and uh, what you're doing in the field of digital assets. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Sabi Bezard. I head digital assets and currencies transformation at Deutsche Bank. So really a big part of my job is working with our corporate bank and investment bank to identify some of the use cases, set our strategy for digital assets and currencies, and essentially then bring those use cases to life. So we're spending a lot of time doing that. As you rightly said, we probably haven't been particularly vocal. I think partly uh, the nature of the bank is we prefer to work on these topics, develop them, and really talk about them once we get to a level of maturity where we think we've really got a, an opinion to share. So I think we've been somewhat purposeful. Um, you know, very briefly, I would say uh, there's four areas that are, are of uh, interest to Deutsche Bank. So the first is custody, as you rightly mentioned that. We believe digital asset custody has a very strong role to play. We've got a strong belief in the tokenized economy of the future. Um, so we believe more and more assets will become tokenized and will come on chain and there will be a demand and a need for a regulated institution like ourselves to be able to play a role in that. Um, and that's also very much driven by what we're hearing from our clients. So that's one key area. The second area is in asset tokenization. So we've got a fundamental belief that, again, you know, we expect to see more and more of those assets become tokenized and Deutsche Bank wants to play a role in that asset tokenization space. We actually um, tokenized our own internal bond at the end of last year. Uh, we didn't make too much of a, uh, an announcement about it because it was very much an internal focused experiment to get that capability um, up and running. The third area is digital cash, on-chain cash. We believe having cash on-chain will be of paramount importance. Obviously, we're very involved in the discussions on CBDC, central bank digital currencies, whether they're retail or wholesale. Um, but we're also now looking at understanding how we can bring some of our commercial bank uh, liabilities on-chain as well. So that's an active area of investigation. And then the final piece for us is around understanding how we can take a lot of the TradFi uh, use cases that we have and see where the blockchain DLT can improve them partly, what you heard in the, the previous panel, things like collateral management, can we, can we use blockchain or DLT to make what is essentially a TradFi business into a cheaper, more efficient, more effective way of getting work done. So that's a very quick summary. Very nice, thanks. Uh, and with this, head over to Jürgen. Please present also you and your company. Thank you, yeah. Um, hi everyone, um, Jürgen Hofbauer. I'm uh, responsible for the global um, partnership strategy at Taurus. Um, for those who don't know Taurus, um, we are a infrastructure provider for custody and tokenization. Um, Swiss headquartered, um, where it's also our uh, core cool market, um, where we're working with a variety of banks, um, and have started now, maybe also working a little bit in the background um, in engaging with banks like Deutsche Bank to assist them in uh, providing the software um, and the solutions uh, really to, to achieve their goals, which is building up custom tokenization. Um, very much what what we are here for to do is is to enable banks um, in their journey. We have um, a fully integrated platform, um, and the benefit of the platform um, that 
that we look at is we want to be smart contract agnostic. We also want to be um, blockchain agnostic, whether you want to build it on private or public blockchain. Because again, there's many different use cases and many different um, you know, lines of businesses to look into it that have different requirements. What we want to do is just have the overarching solution that helps um, them achieve the goal. Thank you. Perfect. So, and you are both collaborating together. Maybe both of you could quickly express um, how this co how this cooperation uh, began. Uh, where are you standing right now? What is the progress of your cooperation right now? Because in, ca in case Deutsche Bank is starting such a cooperation with an, uh, Taurus as a supplier, then that's of course uh, strategic and will not be abandoned uh, overnight. Uh, so therefore you of course have long-term long plans, right? Maybe you can outline them a little bit. Sure, happy to, happy to do so. I think, you know, the first thing I would say, I think we very much see it as a partnership with Taurus. This is an area for us that is clearly, you know, not an area that we had a huge amount of capability in. As you would imagine, it's a new and emerging space. So we needed to find a partner that had a, the right level of experience, that has worked with regulated institutions like ourselves, that can really deliver an enterprise-grade solution. I think that's one of the differentiating features in this space. There's a lot of participants, but not many that perhaps are able to deliver enterprise grade level scalability, security, right? All of those types of things that are really, really critical if you're a regulated institution. Um, so so that, that was really where the need came from. And we identified digital asset custody as a really important infrastructure element for us. Because if we're able to build out or if we are to build out some of our other digital asset capabilities, we know we will need things like wallet infrastructure. We will need to in ensure that we can move customer funds around safely and securely. We need to make sure we've got a secure ecosystem around which to operate. We need to be mindful of regulation. So there was a whole host of criteria that we had when we first started that journey. And we did essentially a very rigorous selection process um, to, to get to the conclusion that Taurus was a partner that we wanted to work with. You know, I, I think beyond a technology uh, element, which is obviously important and all of the things I said are, are important, you also need to make sure that you find the right partners that you feel, I think, as you said, Philip, that you can collaborate with for the longer term. And that for us was the other, other reason that we um, ended up entering into that agreement with Taurus. Um, certainly was a long journey to get there, um, but we made it. Um, but it's, um, it's also, you know, mindful. Um, what I think is very important as well, you have the technology that can enable you, but also you need probably people working on almost like the tourist side that understand banks, right? You, you have a heavy regulated environment. Um, yes, technology can, can do basically anything you want to, but then how do you really make that fit in, in, the, uh, in the environment you're in? Um, I think it's good to have kind of like the background as well as, as, as to how that works. Um, and then really work closely in, in partnerships to understand okay, what, what are the needs, right? Um, sometimes that can also be, um, you know, just generally speaking, um, there is many, many of, um, of solutions out there. You know, everybody wants to have the best in class. Maybe somebody talks about, oh, I want to have MPC. And then you really need to dig deeper as well. So why do you want to have MPC solution? Are you a high frequency trading firm? Or are you a bank that really focuses on a custody site? And maybe HSM is the better site. So sometimes I think what does help as well is kind of like, you know, <clears throat> drill deeper a little bit and not just say, yes, we can build it for you. But does that actually make sense for the business you're in? Perfect. And apparently you also had some barriers um, uh, generally, but uh, we would now like to talk about the, the barriers of blockchain technology in general. So um, what barriers could you imagine or did you observe during your journey? And uh, what is the barriers generally for blockchain technology um, not, ad not getting adopted more fastly? Or put it differently, differently, or leading to the next question, why did blockchain technology not succeed so far easily? Why does it take so long? Uh, that's related to the barriers, right? Who wants to give it a start? Yeah, I, I can maybe start and then Jürgen, maybe you can add. I think from our perspective, there's probably a few things. Um, you know, some points are very generic. Uh, they're not, to be honest, Deutsche Bank specific. The, the first issue is legacy infrastructure. All of the banks have a huge amount of legacy infrastructure. Um, you know, whether things could work more efficiently, the reality is there's a huge inertia to move away from platforms and systems that have been invested in over many, many years um, to simply just turn them off and imagine that you could turn something new on is probably a little bit 
naive and if anyone's worked on a large-scale transformation program in a bank will know that's not an easy task. So firstly, it's just trying to conquer that. I think the other space that we'd observed is until fairly recently, there wasn't really enough momentum on the regulatory side of things. So that, you know, again, you heard from the previous panel that regulations are becoming clearer. I would absolutely agree with that. Regulations are now absolutely becoming clearer. But the other issue is that you also need unanimity on the key regulatory concepts. You'll never have one regulation that rules everything. That's just an unrealistic expectation. But what you shouldn't have is the opportunity for regulatory arbitrage. And I think for banks that are trying to build global businesses, it's important that the rules are roughly speaking similar across the globe. That allows you to build a global product, a global set, a global set of services, and allows you to get the scale that you'll need to make this important. So I, I would say, at least from my perspective, those are at least you know a couple of the reasons that we've seen that um, that you know that, that have presented challenges. And then with regulation, of course, is is the legal aspect as well, right? So again, there has not been enough tests in law around who owns tokenized collateral. What does it mean? to own tokenized collateral. Is that the same as owning the underlying collateral in the legacy systems today? So these types of novel technologies, they're, they're not unexpected issues, but these novel technologies throw up these type of questions and they, those need to be really flushed out and answered before you get widespread acceptance and then the scale that you would need on, on this sort of technology. Maybe to add to that, it's also for banks uh, building up the, the skill set uh, and the people, bring right, the right people in. Um, and, and learn, really learn, okay, how the process is today, which you know very well, um, how does it look like in a future state uh, with the technology? Because again, you can you can use the technology, but if you use it the right way, you have some operational risk, you have maybe reputational risk as well. Um, and and that's, that's all, I think, that's what it takes to just understand, you know, three years ago, um, was crypto there? Yes. Digital assets there? Yes. Could you tokenize something? Yes, you could but it's the understanding of what it really is. Business cases, I think, very important as well. And what, what, what makes the right business case for it? Because um, just you want to build something for the sake of it. Uh, I think we heard before, there is, um, you know, inv investments are not, um, you don't have infinite amount of money that you can invest in that. So you really need to be specific around this. Yeah, maybe I add also one point here, um, in case we talk about technology like blockchain, it's an infrastructure technology, it's like the internet at that point of time. Um, we started with the internet in 1998, plus minus, uh, when, it when it became quite easily accessible to everyone. And now um, it took us 20 years until the smartphone arrived and, and until the smartphone reached a diffusion of plus minus 100%, right? So 20 years from the realm of the internet until the internet in everybody's hand with the smartphone, 20 years. We just get a little bit confused, I think, sometimes because there are other technologies like AI and ChatGPT where the diffusion can be very, very fast because it's easily accessible. Yeah? So ChatGPT, everybody knows it. One year ago, I didn't know ChatGPT uh, in, uh, uh, in, in any depth, right? So at that point of time, there was the diffusion close to zero. Now it's significantly higher. It took us one year in the AI space such that everybody can have like a first success with a chatbot uh, telling something um, with AI in mind, right? So. That was one year, and therefore we should not benchmark blockchain technology as an infrastructural technology against ChatGPT taking one year, right? Therefore, sometimes it's a little bit of an unfair comparison. Uh, I would prefer, therefore, the comparison of the adoption of the internet, the smartphone, making the internet accessible in everybody's hand, and uh, blockchain, right? Would you agree or would you disagree? I I'd, I'd agree with that, and you know, my analogy was is I'm old enough to have been one of the first people that got to use internet at, at university, and my favorite uh, search engine was Alta Vista, right? It was brilliant, it was a very simple search engine, you could put a word in and you would get a whole bunch of uh, answers back. That was well before Google. That no longer exists, right? That was a dominant uh, search engine it's gone, it had 50, 60% of the market share. So it's not unexpected that you go through these cycles as infrastructure gets uh, introduced. I think the other piece is it's a very regulated space, right? For banks, it's a very regulated space. So it's not that easy just to turn on a new infrastructure and expect it to work. It needs to be developed over time. There needs to be some experiments you need to reassure, not just the regulators, but also yourselves that the technology is not gonna destabilize something else that you're running um, and trying to implement. So, so it absolutely does take time. Just one more point to add is around standards, maybe, because um, I think generally the industry likes standards, regulators like standards, because it kind of like makes things easier. 
um, to understand as well. And, and again, you can't build that overnight, right? So you need to test, you need to trial, you need to fail, but then you come up with the right solution that's there. Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest topics for the next one or two years, uh, how to develop standards in terms of product standards, tech standards, uh, communication standards for blockchain systems and so on, uh, to then uh, reach adoption now that the law is not so much an issue anymore, right? Um, we talked about the speed of adoption, we talked about the barriers. You would like to add something here? Otherwise, I would like to move on to the next question asking, do you see some change on the horizon? Will it speed up? Uh, will there be adoption coming now, finally? Or uh, will it stay at the current speed of quite slow adoption, so to say? I, look, from, from my perspective, I think there's plenty of green shoots. I don't think anybody can definitively say yes, 100%. But I think if I look, just, you know, just look at the ecosystem. So firstly, that regulation I talked about absolutely is coming. We've been, you know, we're in discussions with regulators almost globally. And you can see there's a real desire uh, to, to help get to the right answer on this topic. So it's not that regulators are disengaged, don't care, discouraging. That is absolutely incorrect, right? They absolutely are embracing of this technology if it is implemented the right way. So I think that's one piece that's very, very encouraging, the level of seriousness at regulators, and quite frankly, also the level of knowledge. I think it's probably fair to say that when you first started those discussions, the knowledge level was probably fairly low in the blockchain DLT space, which is understandable, but they've really, really come up now and you know, are able to have really meaningful conversations. So that regulatory development for me is the first thing. The second piece is I think we're seeing an evolution in terms of what things are being experimented on. And I do say experimented carefully because we don't today have the scale to say that these are huge businesses. If we think about the type of experiments that happened previously, they were very small scale. They tended to be just around the issuance process um, which many banks and financial institutions have proven. The issuance of a digital security now perhaps is not as much of a big deal as it might have been 24 months ago uh, or, or, you know, or, or previously to that. Now the focus on, is, is on what do I do with that? Can I use it as collateral? Can I use it in a repo transaction? Can I trade it? And I think that's a welcome conversation because that's showing that we're progressing in the conversations that we're now having. So I think that for me is the other, other piece. Um, and, and then the, the, the other discussion for me is also, you know, if, if you think about this two tracks here, one is a, essentially a revenue story. Can I use blockchain DLT to unearth new types of revenue with clients? That's a good story. It's always a harder one to sell, especially when you're within a bank and you're trying to make a business case for why someone should invest money into this project versus perhaps other projects, even AI for that matter, which, you know, which is a very, very compelling technology. And I think, therefore, the answer tends to be focusing on or, or having one focus on those cost cases. And I think those cost cases have become somewhat more compelling just because of where interest rates are today, right? Previously, it probably didn't matter if some processes or some money was tied up somewhere overnight, right? Interest rate zero or negative in some cases. Now it actually does hurt the business um, if those transactions, trades are not settled quicker than perhaps they might have been in the past. So I think that's another, for me, compelling reason why we're seeing an acceleration. I think um, I think 2024 will be an interesting year. Um, just thinking that, so we do infrastructure, which means the banks need to go out to the regulators and apply for licenses as well. And I think many started um, embarking on this journey about maybe 12 months ago, maybe longer. So now think about it, maybe it takes 12, 18, 24 months um, to kind of like get, hopefully get this approval. Hence, 2024, I see as, a, as an interesting year, um, the ones that started early as to, you know, will the, will the license be granted, which license will be there, and what, once the licenses are granted, will be built up on it. And I think there is, um, again, many that, that, that do something behind the scenes. So for me, yeah, 2024 is, is absolutely something to watch out for. Yeah, interesting points. And last question from my side concerning tokenization. What is what is different now? What are the key one or two points where you see tokenization being different when you compare it to traditional solutions? Is it the T plus two topic now being reduced to T plus zero? Is it the potential cross-border um, transfer of assets? Is it the usage, easy usage as collateral or other things? What are the, the top one, two, three points where you see tokenization is of use? 
Yeah, I think for me it's the, the speed and efficiency. You've already mentioned that. I actually think the big opportunity, though, will end up being in the space of um, real-world assets. I think that's where there's an untapped market today. But I think it'll take time to get there. I think there'll be a natural evolution where we'll start with the more traditional securities before we look at that. But that space is a huge space where there's next to zero uh, trading that happens today. I think that, that space actually has huge potential. Um, interest rate you mentioned before, I think that definitely changed. Um, the other thing I would uh, look out for is uh, tokenization in private markets. I think not many companies can maybe afford to go the whole journey on being listed on a stock exchange. Um, so that would give them another edge to involve communities, run projects, raise money, raise equity at that um, by, by the means of tokenization. Yeah, I agree and I would add one more point. The breadth of assets you could tokenize uh, is basically much more than what you what we have today. Yeah, uh, tokenization of real estate, you know, all these topics we have discussed it in the last years. Uh, at some point of time it will make sense, costs are driven down and then we will have a myriad of new assets potentially being investable. I hope you agree. <laughs> Perfect. And then with this, let's stop at this point of time and uh, move on with the agenda. We will talk about similar topics in the afternoon, for example, business models for asset managers and so on and so forth. Um, happy to hand over the word back to you, Marcel.